How's it going guys? Welcome back to Gary's Mod and today we're going to be taking a look at, well, Half-Life 1. That's right, today's goal is going to try to, well, downgrade Gary's Mod from Source Engine to, well, Gold Source. Even though we're using Half-Life Source assets. So instead of asking questions, let's go ahead and talk about what we're looking at. And first up, I think you can notice, we have the Half-Life 1 HUD. Now this HUD does do a lot of things, including that intro screen you saw with your, well, player model. The next thing you're going to notice is we do have a health indicator. Now we also have a suit indicator, which is pretty freaking sweet. And you might have also noticed that we have a pickup indicator on the right, which looks just like from, well, Half-Life 1. The next thing we have is the Half-Life 1 weapon selector, which looks really good. It looks just like it does in Half-Life 1. Also, guys, this HUD is scalable. I had to make it a little bit bigger because, well, my resolution's a little bit too high. Now this even comes with, well, a damage indicator. And also an environmental warning, just like it does in the original game. And yes, of course, that also means we have a death screen. Now next up, I was going to showcase a water retexture mod because, well, there's one that makes it use the Half-Life 1 or the Gold Source shaders. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Tried restarting my game, restarting my computer, everything, couldn't get it to work, so sadly, we're gonna have to skip this one. But I guess the next thing we should talk about is, well, the map. It's a Half-Life 1 styled construct, and I think we have shown this before. There is also going to be a flat grass one, which we will showcase later on in the video. Overall, pretty cool stuff. Definitely does give you that Half-Life 1 vibe. I really do like the Black Mesa rocks in the background. Really makes you feel like it's 1999 again. Next up, we have the weapons. Now, these weapons aren't a mod per se. In fact, they're just built into the game if you have Half-Life 1 source mounted. So if you own Half-Life 1 Source, well, on Steam, and you go ahead and mount it by going to Games, and then just simply selecting it, and then you might have to restart your game, you will now notice that you have access to all the Half-Life 1 weapons, all the Half-Life 1 NPCs, although sadly you don't really get a whole lot of Half-Life 1 props. Or do you? That's right, the next add-on is a bunch of Half-Life 1 props, and... You could just go crazy. You can decorate your maps with this. You can add things like, well, cacti. Or hey, maybe even this interesting looking machine. Or even a trash bin for, well, your trash. Now guys, there is a lot of props in here. A lot of props. So I'm not gonna obviously showcase all of them. Just know that, well, they are there and they're a lot of fun to mess around with and see what they look like. Now the next thing you probably noticed, if I shut up for a second, we have Half-Life 1 sounds, and this extends beyond just footsteps. We have the menu sound, although the menus do sound similar in Half-Life 2. What about fall damage, though? Yep, it's Half-Life 1. Spawning in some Half-Life 1 NPCs, and everything truly just comes together. It really does feel like you're playing Half-Life 1. But what about water sounds? Well, I don't know if they even changed that in Half-Life. <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure they did. Uh, the water sounds haven't changed, unfortunately. That might be tied with the water shader or something like that. But now we're going to have to go a little bit dark. However, there's no worry. We have the Half-Life 1 flashlight. That is the next mod we're going to showcase, and it works just like it does in the original game. Which is so funny, like, we didn't have actual, like, dynamic lights back then. So we had to just pretty much point at a surface and light it up. And that's how it works. Like, there's no beam of light or anything. It just, you look at a surface, it's lit up. It's, it's such a rudimentary way to do it. And it really humbles me because it shows that we've come so far. And really, I appreciate all the advances that gaming has made since then. So this probably isn't going to help you find a bull squid in the dark. But you know what? At least you're going to have nostalgia. Next up, and I thought we would go too well, Flat Grass for this one, which of course is the other Half-Life 1 map. Really cool, I love that we do have the borders, um, pretty sick stuff, I don't even know if a map like this could even have existed in Half-Life 1, cause, well, it's pretty large. And I'm sure you guys do remember the constant loading screens in Half-Life 1. Our next mod we're gonna take a look at as well... The Half-Life 1 Gibbing System. That's right, if you have the explosive power, pieces are gonna start flying. Now, I'm not too sure if explosives are the only way to achieve this. Okay, well, that's proof right there that's not. 
And that really is the final piece of the puzzle. That's what made it click for me to really make it feel like Half-Life 1. Now it is important to note, of course, that, well, this also works on any other NPC. So it doesn't have to be a Half-Life 1 version, but I think we can all agree that it does look the best on the Half-Life 1 NPCs. And there you have it. That is a handful of mods to try to transform Gary's mod into, well, what it may have looked like if it came out during the Gold Source era. As always, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. What did you think about any of these mods? Was there one that you think I might have missed? Could have chose a player model, I guess, but I digress. If you want to leave a like or subscribe, you guys totally can. Links will be in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a great weekend. And until next time, thanks for watching and farewell.